All right, watching the world burn, watching the world burn. May 1st, 2024, let's get into it. So this video is just all about the intentional demolition of the United States and, uh, and everything that's been going on. A lot of significant events happening to the United States. Uh, it's, it, you, you're not, nobody is this stupid. <laughs> I mean, you got to remember Blinken and uh, Sullivan and all them guys, you know, they were educated at Ivy League schools. Now, granted, that's a terrible education as we've been seeing, but uh, they're not this stupid. They, they're intentionally destroying the United States. And I don't get what the end game is. Maybe to bring in a, a digital currency. Uh, uh, you tell me, what, why do you think they're intentionally want to demolish the United States? I mean, it, you know, they, they seem to be uh, happy because they get to, they think they're projecting power all around the world. Well, you know, once you destroy the dollar and once you destroy the currency and once you completely destroy the United States, well, I guess they're all going to go live on an island or maybe they'll move to uh, Switzerland or Brussels. So who knows? But anyway, I, significant event, uh, seven, I think it's seven countries have requested their gold from the United States. Uh, so you can see more that, that Saudi Arabia, uh, Nigeria, I think South Africa. I can't remember the other other four. They were small name countries, but uh, hell, I didn't even know the United States was housing other countries' gold. Uh, that's a hell of a lot of trust they had in the United States, or used to have. <laughs> they don't have no, no trust in the United States anymore. And then uh, the rapid destruction of the dollar is just phenomenal. Right now in Japan. They're selling uh, U.S. Treasuries now. That, does that bring down the yen? Yes, it does. Uh, but they're depending on you know because they're a huge manufacturer. You know, you got Toyota, Honda, uh, and they're going to do what Russia did. You know, the ruble when the sanctions first hit, the ruble dropped big time in Russia. Uh, but because Russia had commodities and plenty of uh, products to sell, the, the ruble came right back, and it, it, they, it was unpinned from the Western uh, SIFT, SWIFT system. So I think the Japanese are heading in that direction. They, they're they're going to unpin their currency eventually from the United States because otherwise they wouldn't be selling treasuries. Uh, that, that means that you know they're going to depend on their uh, manufacturing and the, the products that they sell around the world to, to prop up their currency again uh, after it devalues uh, and see what happens. So we'll see another country, even a so-called ally, getting away from the dollar. Now the other thing that I'm sure you've heard about is uh, we confiscated a bunch of Russian assets here in the United States. So then Russia turned around and they confiscated Bosch. And I can't remember, it was another co company out of uh, Italy. So Russia, so you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And there's a, there were a lot of Western countries that had businesses in Russia. So now Russia's nationalizing those businesses. Uh, and from what I've seen, it's almost tit for tat. So the West just continues to destroy itself. Uh, with these sanctions, um, so I, you know, you tell me, leave a comment below. I mean, I, I these these, and then of course they're trying to get Europe to confiscate the uh, the the uh, the Russian to give to Ukraine, and that's be it's not going to help Ukraine with the war. That that war is lost, but you know, I will keep their government afloat for a while. Uh, the, the the grifting that takes place, you know, depending on how much of Zelensky, how many mansions he wants to build, you know, that that'll be a determinant factor as to how much that that money props up the uh, Ukrainian government. So anyway, all right. So by confiscating the Russian assets, and of course Blinken just went over to China, said he was gonna we're gonna sanction China. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> I mean, we get all of our goods from China. So we're not hurting anybody but ourselves. See what I'm talking about? It's the demolition of the United States. This isn't gonna harm China in any way, shape, or fashion. That, they're just gonna blink and shrug it off. They've got a good trading relationship now with uh, Russia, uh, somewhat with India uh, to a certain extent, but mainly with all of the uh, countries, especially Africa now. China's making huge inroads in Africa. You know that we've been kicked out of Niger, uh, and the French too, and uh, by the way, Nigeria built a pipeline over to, and I can't remember the name of the country. Uh, so that's, a, and China helped them build that pipeline. So now Nigeria is exporting oil and that's gonna really help their economy out. And then uh, I can't remember the name of the country, but Russia is gonna build a nuclear power plant in Africa. I mean, holy moly, and it was a small country. Uh, they went to, to Putin and said, hey, you know, we'd like to have a nuclear power plant. I wanna say it's FASO. 
what is it called? Bernina Fossil. Anyway, I, I, I'll try to get the name of the country later, but just the fact that Russia is going to build a nuclear power plant in Africa, that's a huge development. And uh, But anyway, getting back to the dollar, so the whole world don't trust, I mean, we're, if we're going to sanction China, that's just, that that's suicide. Uh, confiscated Russian assets, suicide. Okay, so all of these things are designed to bring the dollar down, and, they're, and they're, the pace at which they're doing it is just phenomenal, just phenomenal. So a lot of people were wondering why Mike Johnson gave uh, Ukraine or the military industrial complex another 61 billion dollars. Uh, according to Megatron, uh, that was uh, he got 524,000 from AIPAC, an Israeli uh, uh, what do you call it lobby gro lobby group. Uh, so now we know that Johnson's paid off by the Israelis. Uh, also, I had to make a couple of corrections. Um, Larry Johnson, and I, I, I got to give the name because I'm just going by what they're saying. I don't have any proof of this, but he says now that there's multiple uh, uh, grave, uh, mass graves that have been found in Gaza now, not just one. Um, and he's comparing it to uh, Cambodia or uh, even uh, uh, even back in Germany when they would line the Jews up and shoot them. Uh, he's saying it's on that scale, the mass graves of dead Palestinians that the Israelis have executed. So that uh, genocide continues. According, and, and like I said, I, that's Larry Johnson. I did see the, the photos of, of the first mass grave. And then of course, if you listen to right wing radio, they said that no, those were, those were before the, uh, the raid on, uh, or the, before October 7th, those photos were taken. I have no way of knowing which way it is, but there was definitely a mass grave in, in Gaza. And then uh, uh, Scott Ritter uh, came out and said, uh, and, and by, by, I'm just going by his numbers, he said it was between 9 and 15 missiles that struck uh, Israel. I, I thought it was only 5, and I said that in a previous video. I always correct myself if, I, if the numbers are wrong. Uh, I think in a previous video I, I commented on the flotilla that was going to come out of Turkey uh, full of uh, humanitarian aid for Gaza. Uh, that's not going to go. Uh, we have started construction on that idiot pier. I mean, you realize that all we got to do, all Biden has to do is pick up the phone and say, Netanyahu, there's there's 50, a thousand trucks lined up with humanitarian supplies at the border with, with Egypt or on the other side. And just let the trucks go through. And, and that's how you get the humanitarian aid to the people in Rafa. No, we're going to build a pier and we got boots on the ground, even though Austin came out and lied to Congress and said, no, we don't have boots on the ground. Well, if you got boots on a pier, it was funny because Matt Gates was questioning him. If you got boots on a pier that's connected to the land, plus, you know, to build the, the pier, you you got to have guys on shore. And of course, they did take some mortar fire not too long ago. I mean, you, you have to understand it's not just Hamas in Gaza. There's many, many different factions. And so who knows? It, hell, it could have been the Israelis, for all I know, that shot those mortars at the at the pier. And what's the pier going to be used for? In my opinion, it's going to be used to get the Palestinians out of Gaza. And But where in the hell are they going to send them? I guess, you know, well, since we're destroying the United States, we've got 10 million illegal aliens here now. I wouldn't put it past them to bring all the Palestinians here to the United States, even though they hate the United States for, for good reason, because we've killed the uh, well, last count, I keep saying here in 35,000, it's just like everybody keeps going on. There's, there's only 450,000 dead Ukrainians. Now, I keep telling you it's, gonna, it's a million at least at this point. And that's dead. I'm saying it's over 2 million casualties, but that's, that's just my numbers because I've been following the war so closely. So if it was at 35,000 dead Palestinians a, a month ago or two months ago, you know it's, it's at least 40 to 45, maybe 50,000 dead Palestinians. And that, that doesn't even account, I don't think, for all of the kids that have starved to death down in Rafa, uh, or the people that have starved to death. I mean, think about it. I couldn't go, if, if you kicked me out of my house, because I am crippled and, and everything, I wouldn't survive more than a, a couple of weeks, uh, you know, in, a, in an open air environment without my medical supplies. So imagine the, the number of people that have died down in Rafa that, you know, they had maybe their house, you know, you've heard of uh, tunnels to towers. You know, if you've got your house set up to take care of you for a handicapped person, you can live a pretty good life. But if you take a, the handicapped person out of that environment, you know, let's say a nursing home, for example, you kick, kick those people out of the nursing home and see how long they survive. So God knows how many Palestinians have died 
just because they don't have access to uh, and plus there's no electricity there's no water uh, I, I hear that the you know the, the water is contaminated uh, so they're dying of dysentery it's just uh, it's horrible what the Israelis are doing and I can't stand listening to these right-wing hosts going on and on about you know we got to back Israel you know we got to keep sending them 2,000 pound bombs to drop on the Palestinians oh, by the way I did want to get into the protests for just a minute uh, now from what I understand up at Columbia University those sound like professional protesters uh, and they're violating uh, policy now you know was Texas heavy-handed in sending the, the state troopers in the shock troops uh, there's been some real abuses of, of coming down hard on the students for just uh, protesting. Now, it was kind of like um, Vance, what's it, what the, the, the congressman out of New York, uh, or no, is it Ohio? Anyway, he made a good comment. He says he's all for free speech and them being able to protest. And by the way, all I'm hearing is free, free Palestine, free, free. and you understand Gaza was just an open air prison. So to free Palestine just means two-state solution. So I'm all for what the students are saying. I haven't heard any chants saying death to Jews, death to Jews. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen any uh, videos of Jews being beaten up. Um, I've heard some stories uh, from right-wing radio. They call it anti-Semitism. What is it when the Israelis, because they just beat up a bunch of Palestinians, what's that called? Anti Anti-Palestinian, I guess. I mean, uh, what's the term for beating up an Arab? I mean, you know, I guess it, it's okay to beat up people protesting for Palestine, but it's not okay to beat up. Uh, it's, it, on both sides, of course, it's not okay to, to beat up anybody. And the cops coming in and just chasing the students off, uh, if they're peacefully protesting within, and also, you know, think about how a protest is conducted. You know, you usually have to get a permit. And then, you know, if you're going to march down Main Street and block all the traffic and everything, there's a right way to go about it. So I'm not saying the students are right in the way that they've gone about some of these protests, but they're free to, to, to say whatever they want. Uh, you know, I would rather not hear death to America, but uh, they're free to say it. And I'm all for free speech. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.